In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a desktop application using Flutter. We'll be making the app I made, Metatube, which makes handling YouTube video metadata much easier. Now, I know some of you won't need to use this app unless you're making YouTube videos, but I still encourage you to watch the video as it will teach you a lot of useful information that you will use in your desktop applications. In this video, you'll learn proper folder structure, how to set up your app's window, reading and writing data, making custom widgets and services, and most importantly, turning your app into an EXE that you can install on your computer. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started. To get started, we're gonna launch our command prompt CD into our desktop and then do flutter create and then the app name, which is Metatube. We're gonna wait for that to build. Then we're gonna CD into Metatube and then run code dot to open it up in VS Code. Now that we have that opened, we can go over to our lib folder, open up our main dot dart file and hit F5. We now have our app launched and we can go ahead and resize it, bring it over here, and then we can get started with our Windows app. So first we wanna hit Control Shift N and select everything and delete it. And then we're gonna create our own stateless widget called My App. Instead of returning a placeholder, we're gonna return a material app. And then we're gonna give this a turn off the banner at the top right with false, false. And then we'll go ahead and set up our home. And then our home is going to be home screen and we need to make this. So we can save this, create a new file by going into our lib folder and make a new folder called screens. And then inside that we'll make a new file called home underscore, uh, underscore screen dot dart. I actually changed my shortcut so that I can make new folders and files a little bit easier. Um, but you can just right click and make a folder or change your shortcuts as well. We're gonna import our material app. There we go, and then we're going to create a stateful widget this time, and this is going to be home screen. We need stateful widgets because we're going to be using states, so it's very important that we have a stateful widget. We can go back to our main.dart file and then control period to import our new screen. And there we go, we now have a blank screen and we can get started. So we can close our main.dart file, we don't need it right now, we'll come back to it later, and we can start styling up our home screen. So first we're going to return a scaffold Inside of our scaffold, we're going to give it a background color. Now for our colors, there's a lot of different ways that we could do this. We could use a theme, which is probably the better way, especially if you're gonna switch between a light and dark theme, but we're going to be making a custom uh, file just to handle all of our colors. So we can go into our lib folder, uh, make a new folder, and this will be called utils. And then inside this folder, we'll make a new file called app underscore styles dot dart. We're gonna import our material again because everything needs it. And then we can go ahead and create a class this time. And then this class is going to be called app theme. And then we're gonna put in all of our colors in our app theme. For our background color, we can make a static const. And then this will allow us to make a color. And then this color is just gonna be called dark. We're gonna be using this color a lot. So instead of naming it just our background color, we're just gonna make a color that we'll use all the time if we need it as a dark color. Uh, whatever way you wanna do it is fine. You could do individuals if you want, or if it's reusable, just make it easier and rename it something that you can use over and over. And then for this, our color is going to be a hex color, which is zero X F F, which means there's no transparency. And then the color is one E one E one E, which is a nice uh, black background, which is the same color as my wallpaper. We can go back to our home screen and now we can call our new app theme right here. It's gonna auto import and we have app theme dot dark. Great. And then if we save, we're gonna have a nice black background just like what we want and then delete the const. I also set it up where it on save, it auto formats, also adds any uh, const and all of that stuff. So that's why that's happening. Yours might not do that, but you can definitely set that up. Let me know in the comments below if you need help setting that up and I'll help you out. So now what we need to do is we need to add in a body and our body is going to be a column because that's all we really need. And we're gonna just put everything in our column. So we're gonna give our column some children. So for our column, we're actually going to separate this into essentially uh, two different sections, maybe three, uh, depending on what we wanna do. But the main section is going to be a row and this is gonna be our icons at the top and then we can call uh, our children. So because we're going to be 
using buttons at the top, we're actually going to be reusing our buttons. So instead of just hard coding them in right here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a method that allows us to reuse it as many times that we want to make a button. So we can do this by coming down right before the last uh, bracket, and then we can create a method. Our first method is going to be an elevated button. So we can call elevated button, which means it returns an elevated button. And then we're going to call it mean button. Uh, we'll be using this for our um, new file button at the top, as well as our save file button at the bottom. And then we can go ahead and uh, actually return an elevated button. Now an elevated button is actually going to take two uh, parameters, um, which are right here on pressed and child. Um, we're actually going to make the child a text and then we're going to return uh, this section right here. So what we can do is if you don't know what you're looking to return, you can actually highlight over what it is. And right here, the on pressed is actually a function that could also be null, which is why it has a question mark. So we can actually add that right here and we can pass that when we call the main button. That way we can make individual ones have different on pressed events as well as different text. So to do that, we can just say it's a fu uh, function question mark, which means it could be null and we'll just call it on pressed. And then for our second one, we know that text is a date uh, is a string. So we'll use string and then we can just call it text. And then we can go ahead and replace the data with text. And now we actually have a button if we call it, uh, we can come up here and call it get rid of the const. And we can go ahead and do main button. And now our main button is looking for a function as well as a string. And in the string, we can do new file and save it. And there we go. We now have a button that we made. But the best part is we could actually, uh, and we're going to later, but we could copy this button and make it our save file. And now we have a new file and a save file. And all we had to do was pass in different parameters. Now we don't want our save file at the top, we just want our new file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be adding two more buttons on the right. So we can do that and group them together by making another row. Um, anytime you're in a row and you want stuff to be separated, uh, you just make another row and group those together. So just like our main button, uh, what we're going to want to do is add uh, another buttons for our icons. And we can do that by coming back down below the elevated button. And then this one is going to be an icon button. And this icon button is going to be called action button because that's our actions. You can name it whatever you want, but that's what I chose to do. And then we're going to return an icon button. Perfect. And just like before, the icon button is going to take on uh, an on pressed, which again, we already know is a function question mark. So we can do that now function uh, question mark. Again, that means that it could be null. We can pass null if we want to. And then it's going to take in an icon. Now it's not looking for an icon. I mean, in theory, you could pass an icon, but it's going to be easier if we just pass an actual icon rather than the icon. I know that doesn't make sense, but what I'm trying to say is we can make an icon first and then our icon will actually need an icon. And then we can do icon data and then call it icon. And what this does is allows us to actually just specify what icon we want rather than having to create the icon with what icon we want. And we can do it that way. And then we do want to add uh, a color to this icon. Uh, we'll actually call it first and I'll show you why. So if we call the action button, it's going to pass in our null uh, function at the moment. And then we can pass in an icon by doing icons dot. And then the first one is file upload. And then we're going to get issues with the const. Again, that's my fault, not yours. And there we go. And now we can see that the icon is black, which is not what we want. But we can actually now duplicate this and then just change the fold uh, to a folder for the second one. And now we have both of our icons. And if we click them, there's a few issues with it, which is what we want to change. Obviously the color, but also the splash. So we can work on the color first, come into the icon, and now we can actually pass in a color. Well, we don't have a color made, so we want to go to our app styles and make another color, static const color. This one will be called medium because it's in between our dark and what we'll be using as light. Uh, and this is going to be 0x. And then this one is going to have some opacity, which we're going to use 50. And then it's pure white with opacity of 50, which is F. Great. Now we can call in our app theme dot medium this time. And now our icons are the color that we want. 
They still have a few issues though. Um, the first issue is going to be the splash. So we can change it to splash radius. So we want the splash radius to be 20. Now the splash is much smaller towards the icon. And then we also want to add a splash color, which is going to be our accent color, which we don't have made yet either. So we can go back into our static uh, const color and then we can do accents, which is going to be a nice orange. So this is 0xff, and then it's FFA500, and then this is going to be our orange color. And then we can go ahead and uh, give it right here to our splash radius. This is app theme dot accent. And now when we click it, it's a nice orange color. Now these look a little too close together. Uh, they kind of overlap a tiny bit, which I don't really want. So I can go ahead and just add a size box in between with a width of eight. I like to work on an eight grid. You know that from my previous videos, most people do. So we're just gonna make it eight. We could do four if we want to, but we'll do eight, which is fine. I want it to not be an accident that I click on it, uh, which if they're closer, I could possibly do that. Great. And then with our um, functions, we can go ahead and actually add in a, um, we want to space these apart. So we can do this by doing uh, on our first row, we want to do main axis alignment and then space between. And then this will push them to completely apart. And this is why we put these two in another row because now it's like a row here and a button here. And that's why there's a gap. If you didn't do the other row, these would just be uh, in the middle and, sec and, and stuff like that. So cool. Now obviously this is too close to the edges so we can come up to our column, hit control period and add in a, a wrap with a padding and then we can change the padding to symmetric. And then the symmetric that we're gonna do is uh, horizontal, we'll do 40. And then vertical, uh, vertical we'll do 20. And this will push it 20 from the top and bottom and then uh, 40 from the left and right. Great. Now what we can do is put a comma here and then that's pretty much it for our top section. Um, these don't do anything yet and we'll make them do stuff later. Um, but actually our button is not how we want our button. So what we want to do is we want to create a style on our button because I don't want it to be blue. You could make it blue if you want to, but I want mine to be orange. So what we can do is we can come down here below the icon button and then we can actually make a button style. And to do this, we can do button style and then we can do underscore button style. The underscores mean it's private, which means only this file is going to access it. And it's very good practice to make everything private unless it needs to be accessed somewhere else. Then you can make it public by removing the underscore. Um, but that's what the underscore means, in case you were wondering. And then here we're gonna return a style. Now we don't wanna recreate an entire style ourselves. So what we can do is we can actually already grab the elevated button style by calling elevated button dot style from and this is going to grab the exact style that the button has but then what we can do is we can go ahead and add in a differences that we want it to be so first we want a background color to be different and we can do this by calling app theme dot accent and then when we save this um, we actually need to apply this to my elevated button so we can do that by calling style and then do underscore button style, perfect. And now my button is the orange color that I want, but I also wanna change it a little bit. So we can do a foreground color. This is gonna be the text inside of our button. And we just want this to be app theme dot dark. Great. Now, sometimes our button can be disabled and we're actually gonna do that later with our saved button. And if we test this, let's come back up here. If we were to pass null as the actual function, rather than a function that returns null, our button is now disabled. And I don't like this approach because you can't really see what that is. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change it just a little bit, and we can do that by adding it to our style. So we now have the ability to make a disabled background color, but because we're using a color, we wanna go back to our app styles and create that. So we can do static const color, and then this one will be disabled background color. And then we can just call it colors, because we're gonna use a built-in color rather than make our own, and it'll be black 12. Now we can come back here and then just call that app theme disabled background color. And when we save that, now it's a little bit different. And then we also wanna change the disabled foreground color. So we'll go back to our app styles and then make another one static const color disabled foreground color equals colors dot white 12. 
and the 12 just means there's some transparency. Uh, you can see this by hovering over it. The transparency is right here. It's 12. Perfect. And then we can go back and then call this one as well, disabled foreground color. And now it's a little bit different. It's still disabled, but at least this way you can read it. And then of course, in our design later, it will say show uh, save file. Um, but there, that way, hey, why can't I hit save file? Oh, well, I have to fill out all the inputs and then you'll be able to, but that's how we're gonna handle that, which is nice. Cool. So now we've created our buttons and we've also gone ahead and made styles for them. Now what we can do is we can start working on the next section, which is going to be our um, inputs, our text fields. So we wanna come below the row, right here's the row, and then we can actually add in a little bit of space here as well. So we can do a sized box with a height of 20. That way there's a little bit spacing between the bottom, uh, the top and the bottom. And then what we want to do is instead of using a text field, which we could do just by doing text field, we're going to reuse this text field a lot. So instead of calling it right here, what we want to do is we want to create a custom widget that we'll be using in our design over and over. We could actually make it a method, but I don't like to make too many methods, especially if it's something you could use elsewhere in the app. Uh, it's better if you're only going to be using methods is if it's in the actual file itself. If it's going to be somewhere else or could be somewhere else, we want to branch it out into a different file just to make it cleaner, especially our text field is going to be pretty big. So I don't want to, I like to have at least amount of stuff in my files as possible just to make it easier to maintain for my personal preference. But you could make it a method in here, but we're going to branch it out. So to do that, we can go to our lib folder. We can make a new folder. Actually, we already have, yeah, we'll make a new folder called widgets. And then inside that folder, we'll make a new file, and this will be just called custom underscore text field dot dart. And then we can go ahead and import our material. And then what we want to do is we want to create a stateful widget here as well with our uh, custom text field. And the reason why is because it's going to use something that uses state. So we want to make sure it's a state. And then we can just call this, you can call it whatever you want, but we're just going to call it custom text field. Um, it's the only time that I use this and it is custom, so it works fine. Uh, but we can go ahead and pass that in. So to make sure that we're using this, we can go back to our home screen and delete out the text field. And instead, we want to pass in our custom text field. We can do that just by calling it and then hit save. Great. Now it's a placeholder because we're actually passing in a placeholder, but now we can see what it's going to look like when we start customizing it. So with our uh, stateful widget, we're gonna pass in a few variables or um, properties that we're gonna be using. This way we can reuse it, um, which is really the whole point of making breakout stuff is so that it can be reusable. It's gonna have different information. So we need to pass that in here, and we can do that by calling final, and then what the type of information it is. In this case, it's going to be an int, and our first one is going to be max length. This is the max amount of uh, characters that we can use in our input fields uh, which we'll show later the next one is going to be final int but then this one could also be null um, we don't make it null and it's our max lines but you could make it null in case you don't want to have a max lines I specify all of my lines just for the design but again adding a question mark means that you could pass it as null and then it won't be that so that's what the question mark means that took me a while to figure out and we'll be using those a lot so I'll try to mention them again um, but question mark after the variable, uh, after the uh, the type of uh, information uh, means that it could be null, and that's how that's handled. Next, we want to do is a final string, and this final string is going to be a hint text, hint text. And then we also want to pass in a text editing controller. This is very important. This is how we'll uh, be able to manage the data in our uh, our input. With the controller, then we're going to get an error on the actual uh, const here, and we can just uh, click it and then do add final, and then this will do all of this for us, which is really nice, saves us a lot of time. Great. And then if we were to go back to our home screen, now we're going to get an error on our uh, section because it's looking for this information. So we can come up here uh, right below our state screen. Uh, we can go ahead here and actually add in our text editing controllers. And we can do that by doing text editing controller, and then we're going to name it. Um, now, we're going to be deleting these and using a different one, but I want this to be able to work so you can see what we're doing. Um, so we're going to just call this title controller for now. 
and then it equals a text editing controller. Perfect. Uh, we're only going to use one, and again, we're going to be replacing this, uh, so we can do that later. So we'll do the custom uh, text field again, and now when we call this, it's actually looking for all of this information, and now we can actually pass it in. Again, with our uh, max length, we can do, do 100 since it's the title, and then for our hint text, we're going to do enter video title. And then for the uh, controller, we're just going to uh, pass in our title controller. Now when we call this, it actually uh, should show up. Perfect. And then we can come back here and save. And it's still going to be a placeholder, but now we're not getting any errors. And as you saw, the max lines could be null. And it didn't ask me to actually fill out the max lines because, again, you don't have to if it can be null. But we do want to fill out the max lines for our title. And this is going to be three. But this is why we can actually make all of these null. And then that way we don't have to pass them. But in this scenario, we do want to pass them. Um, but that's why we met, uh, made the max line three in case we don't want to pass it and just let the uh, lines be as long as you want. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how that works, which is cool. Great. And then now what we can do here is we need to go back into our custom text field and we need to start styling it of how we want it. So the first thing we're going to add here is we're going to actually add a focus node. And a focus node it essentially just means that if you hit tab, it'll let you go to the next uh, input without having to click all of them. Uh, so we're going to call this an underscore focus node because it's private just to this variable. But because we have a focus node, there's some things when you create stuff, you want to actually dispose of them, which is why we have the um, stateful widget. And we can do that by calling dispose. And dispose essentially just means, hey, you're going to be here forever until you're not needed. And when you're not needed, I need you to get out of here so you don't use up resources. Uh, that's kind of the easiest way for me to explain it. It's probably a little more complicated than that, but that's kind of how I understand it. So uh, there are some things that we want to get rid of. Um, focus node is one, or text setting controller is another one. If we're not using it, it's kind of waiting for that information in the background, and we just want to get rid of it. So how we do that is we just make it dispose, and then when it's not being used, we dispose of it, we throw it away, and then we recreate it when we need to, which is really cool. Um, so make sure you do this. You don't necessarily have to add this, but uh, definitely make sure that you do. So with this, now we can actually start doing our input controller or text field. So we can do text field and then we can save this. And now uh, everything should update. It's still a placeholder, custom text field, placeholder. All right, let's go ahead and refresh just to make sure it's grabbing it. There we go. Sometimes you need to refresh if you're changing a lot of things. Great. So now we actually have a text field, but we do not want this text field to look like this. We want it to look much, much better so we can start styling that stuff. So we can get rid of the cons because we're going to have to later. Uh, first, we can pass in our focus node. Our focus node is going to be our focus node. Very simple there. And then because we want to have a focus node, we want to use our focus node. And we can do that by on editing complete. And then it'll take a function. And then this function is focus a scope and then focus scope dot of oops, focus scope dot of context. There we go. And then we just want to grab the next focus. And then the next focus is essentially going to be anything that has focus on it. I, I believe it's just going to skip to the next one, which allows us to hit tab. Now what we want to do is we want to pass in our controller. Very important that we do this. And because the controller is here in our file, it's up here before we actually do our state. We just need to call widget, which is grabbing the widget information. And now we can call in our controller. We also want to uh, call in our max length. So our max length, again, widget dot max length. This is why it's very easy to name stuff because it's just the same thing. And then of course, our last one, is going to be max lines and then widget, oops, can't type today, widget dot max lines. There we go. And then if we save this, now we actually have all of the information that we wanted. Uh, it's very hard to see, but right here there's a little zero out of 100. Uh, we have the three lines here, which again, hard to see, which is why we're customizing it. But there's three lines here, one, two, three, and then any more lines would just scroll. So that's kind of what we've added there. And then uh, what we can do, and then we also have the controller, which allows us to grab this information, which we'll see. So now that we have that out of the way, let's start customizing it to how we want it to look. So first, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it knows that it's keyboard type multi-line. 
Um, and we can do this by keyboard type and then text input multiline. Um, I think by default, uh, it doesn't tell me what the default is. Yeah, it doesn't tell me what the default is. It could actually be null, so we'll make it multi-line just to make sure. And then we also want to do a cursor color. We already have a color for this. It's our app theme dot accent. And make sure we import it, and then we can call in our accent. Now that's going to turn this to orange, which is great. Next, what we want to do is we want to add a style, and this style is going to be for the text inside. So we can go to our app styles, and then we can come down here and make a new style. This one is going to be static const text style, and then we'll call this uh, input style. I love how uh, VS Code is like, hey, do you want this? Eh, maybe. And then uh, we can call a text style. And then for this text style, we're not going to customize it too much. Uh, we're essentially just going to pass in our text color. And then we don't have a color for this one, so we're going to make it. Right up here, we'll do static const color, and then this is going to be our light. And our light is essentially just 100% white. So 100% opacity, and, or not opacity, and then uh, pure white. And then we can call that here, light. Great. And then we also want a font size, and our font size is just going to be 20. Now when we type, uh, it doesn't save it because we have to call it. So we can do app theme dot input style. And now when we type, it's actually pure white. And again, you can make this any color, but I thought the white looked the best. Great. Next, what we want to do is we want to get rid of these borders and stuff. Uh, actually, we'll decorate it first. So we'll do decoration, and then we'll do an input decoration. And then this input decoration is going to pass in a few different things. Uh, the first thing is going to be our hint style. And our hint style uh, we need to make as well. So we can come back in here. Now with our hint style, uh, same as before, static const text style. And then we'll do hint style. And then it's going to equal a text style. Now we don't actually have to pass in a font size here unless we want it to be different. Because it's going to grab the input style font size because it happens first. So we don't actually have to pass in a different font size if I want it to be the same, which is really nice. We do, however, have to pass in our color. And for our color, we're just going to call medium. And that's it. And then this way, uh, it's white. And then when we show in our hint style, which we'll get to in a moment, you'll see that it's a different color. So we need to call that hint style. Great. And then we want to pass in our hint text. So our hint text we actually already have. So it's widget.hintText. And that comes in from the top. And then make sure we delete the const. Great. So this is a medium. And then this is, oops. This is medium and then this is white, but as you can see, if I delete it and paste it in, it's the exact same size because it grabs from the input, which is nice. Saves you a step. <laughs> Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, focus border. Uh, focus border is this blue that I don't like, and we're going to switch this to an outline uh, input border. And then we're going to pass in a border side. Uh, which lets us know what uh, side it is, and it's just going to be all of them. So then we're just going to call border side, and then here we're going to pass in a color, and then that color is our accent color. And as you can see here, we've added a border around our text field, uh, but only when it's focused. So if we unfocus it, it doesn't highlight it. Great. And then what we want to do here is we wanted to do the enabled border. So we can come down out of this one. We want to do enabled border, and then this enabled border is going to be an outline input border, just like before, border side, just like before, and then we're going to pass in a border side, and then this one is going to take a color, but the color is going to be our medium color. This way it's uh, orange when we're selecting it, so when it's in focus, and then it's not and as you can see, we got rid of that little blue thing because we overwrote it. But uh, it's gray when it's not selected, and then orange when it is selected. Typing, not typing, typing, not typing. So that's kind of the approach I took. But you can make this styled exactly how you want. And then, of course, we need to style our little counter at the bottom. So you can come out of that one and then do counter style. And then this one is very easy. It's just going to be app theme dot counter style. But we don't have a counter style, so let's go ahead and make one. And then this one is similar to the other ones, but we'll do static const text style. There we go. And then this one will be counter style equals a text style. And then this is going to be a color of medium. 
And then the font size, just a little bit smaller, we'll do 14. Perfect. And then we can go ahead and call it here, app theme .counter style. Great, and there we go, it matches the border. It stays or, uh, gray though. And then if we type, it starts counting up until we're at 100. And then once we're at 100, um, it just doesn't let us type anymore. Great, perfect. And then lastly, uh, we wanna have the ability to copy uh, paste, uh, which I actually have in the design right here. And we can add that uh, anywhere we want, but we'll put it right above the decoration. We can do this by doing a suffix icon. Oh, it has to be in the decoration. So we'll put it right uh, below the input decoration. We'll do right below the hint text. We'll call a suffix icon. And the suffix icon, we're actually going to make a, let's bring it out here. We're gonna make, a, we're gonna branch it out because it's kind of a lot of information. Um, so we can actually break it out just so it's easier to follow. So we can come down right below, right below the last uh, bracket. And then we can do icon button because it's going to be an icon button just like we had before. We're going to call it copy button. And then this copy button is going to uh, return our copy paste button essentially. So we wanna bring in our contacts and I'll show you why in a moment, um, but we can do build contacts contacts, which is going to pass in the context of our widget build. We're actually gonna be creating a uh, snack bar when we click this. So we need to pass in the context here to pass in the contacts later so that we can use the um, actual information. Cool, and then we're gonna return an icon button, like so. And the icon button is going to take an on pressed as well as an icon just like before. This is the only time we use it, so we don't need to break it out so it's reusable and make it uh, more dynamic where we could pass in different icons. You could definitely do that if you want to, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, so we're just going to pass in an empty uh, uh, function for right now, and then we're going to uh, add the icon. So the icon is going to be icon, and then the icon itself is going to be icons dot content copy rounded, which is a nice little copy paste there. Cool. Now what we want to do is we want to call this so we can see it. So we can go right below, uh, right above the focus border, and call suffix icon. And then the suffix icon is going to be our copy button and we're gonna pass in the context. So now we have it, it looks blue just like the other one because that's its default coloring. So we wanna switch this up a little bit. We can do that by adding a color to our icon. Our color is going to be, of course, our app theme accent, perfect. And then we also want to, actually we don't wanna pass it the cool thing is with an icon button, and I did it earlier with the icon itself, but you actually have the ability to pass in a color. And then the color we can actually just do is app, uh, app theme accent. So before I did it on the actual icon itself, but technically I could have just done it here. So again, different ways to do different things. And of course, when we click this button, we do have the same issues as before. So the splash radius is going to be 20. Uh, we, we need to change it here, splash radius 20. There we go. And then we're gonna just keep it this color. Um, now we'll switch it out then. So we'll do splash radio, uh, splash color, and then the same as before. So app theme accent. And then just like we had before, it works the same way as these do. Cool. Uh, now the cool thing though is we can also add a disabled color, which is why we did it as colored. So we have a color and then a disabled color. And then the disabled color is actually going to be our medium so it matches the rest of the border. Great, but it's not disabled at the moment. And we can disable this by passing in our uh, on pressed as null, and now it's disabled. But we wanna actually handle this a different way. Instead of passing in a hard-coded var uh, variable, we actually wanna make it where if this is empty, then it's disabled. But the moment has text in it that we could copy, then we wanna actually paste that in. So what we can do is we can actually check that by going widget.controller, because we have access to the controller, dot the text inside of the controller, and is not empty. So what we're saying here is, is the widget controller text not empty? And if it is, then we can pass in a function that means that it's not empty, which means there's text in there. So right now we're gonna pass in an empty uh, 
a variable, but it'll let us click it. And then if it is empty, well, we don't want to do anything, so we can disable it. All right, so for this to work, uh, we're actually going to have to pass in the function because right now this is still returning null, which is why it's still disabled. Um, so let's go ahead and add in our function that we want. And we can do that by coming up here above our build context, and we can actually start creating our function that is going to allow us to copy paste. Uh, the function is going to return a void, and then this is going to be copy uh, to clipboard. And then we're going to receive the context that we've gotten from earlier. And then we're also going to pass in a string here that we're going to be able to use um, as our text for our um, snack bar. So we're going to have to pass in the context. This is why I said earlier we're going to have to pass in our context to our copy button because we're going to have to pass it to our copy to clipboard of, uh, method as well. Um, but then we also have our string and then we can pass in a text and then this way we can use it this way too which is really cool. So what we can do here then is we're going to do uh, clipboard dot set. Oops, we have to import our uh, clipboard. So clipboard dot set data. And then this data is going to take our clipboard data. And then it's going to take in our text as our text. So essentially, this is just a clipboard dot set data, grab a set uh, clipboard data, going to require some text and that text is going to be the text that we're going to pass in here. And now what we can do here is we can actually call this uh, here then. And this is why we were getting an issue earlier because it was actually looking for us to return something um, rather than returning null. Um, return null, null, it's always going to be null. So what we can do here then is we can call our function and it is copy to clipboard and then it's going to take in our context and then it's going to take in our text and the text that we want to take in is whatever is in our widget controller widget controller dot text and i'll loop that then so what this is saying is copy to clipboard grab in the context that i've given you and then grab in the data from the widget controller dot text and now when we type in all right, so it kind of works at the moment. Um, if we have data in it and save our file, it does change orange and we can click it. Um, but then if uh, we don't and we save our file, uh, then it goes gray. Uh, we're going to come back and fix this. I think it's just based on how we have it set up. It's not working properly, um, but we'll come back to fix this because it'll work in the end. But um, let's go back to our copy to clipboard. And then right below our set data, we actually want to pass in a snack bar uh, that we can use to actually give back uh, data to our user that, hey, you've actually copied this. Because if we click it, I don't know what that did. So we can create a snack bar. Now, the snack bar we're actually going to be using all over our app. So what we can do is we can actually turn it into a utility by coming over to our utils, make a new file, and call this snack bar uh, underscore utils dot dart. And then this is very simple. We can go ahead and import our material because we're going to use that. And then we can actually create a, a class here and we'll call this class uh, class snack bar utils just so we know which one we're calling. And then we're going to pass in a uh, method here as well. So we'll do static uh, void and then show snack bar. And then this snack bar is going to take in a few things that we're going to need. Uh, the first one is going to be the build context. Like I said earlier, we need to pass in the contacts. That's going to take it here. We also want an icon because we're going to be using an icon if it's good or bad, a good error or a bad error. So we can do icon data dot icon. And then we also want to pass in our message, which is going to be a string. So we can do string message. And then here, all we want to do is we want to currently hide the scaffold uh, that's already there if there is one there. So we can do this by doing scaffold uh, messenger dot of context. And then we can do hide current oops, hide current snack bar. We always want to do this first, otherwise it'll just stack on top of them. And if you uh, keep pressing the same buttons over and over, it'll just continue on forever and ever. So always hide the first one. And then what we want to do is we want to show a new one. So we can do this by uh, scaffold messenger dot of context, just like before. And then this one is going to show a snack bar. And then the snack bar takes in a few things. Of course, it's going to take in a snack bar itself. And then the snack bar needs some content. So for this content, it's very straightforward. We're just going to create a row. This row is going to have some children. And then the first child is going to be an icon. And then this icon is going to take in our icon that we're passing in. And then we're going to just give it a color of our app theme dot accent, which installs our app theme. There we go. 
And then after our icon, we also just want to add in a little bit of width. So we'll do a size box width of eight. And then we're going to pass in our message. And we could style this message as well, but I'm okay with the default uh, styling. So we can just pass in our message. And now what this is essentially doing is just saying, hey, show a snack bar. Snack bar should have a row. Inside that row, it should have an icon, some spacing between the icon and then the message. And now we can go back, save that, and we can go back and we can actually call our snack bar in our custom field when we copy it. To do this, it's very straightforward. We just need to call our new uh, snack bar utils, auto import. We're going to call the method that we added, which is show snack bar. We're going to pass in our contacts that we're getting from our copy to clipboard, which we're getting from our copy button, which we're getting from our build context because uh, we passed it along all of them. We're going to want an icon for this one, which is just going to be icons content copy. And then we want to add in a message and this message can just be copy text. And there we go. So now when we click this, uh, when we have the data in, which again, we're gonna fix this, it's messing up because of how we're doing our text field. Like I said earlier, our text field is a text editing controller. Um, this is just default for right now, so it's causing some errors. We'll fix that later. Um, but when we save it, it actually grabs that data right away. And now we can actually copy this and we'll get our copied text. And if we delete our text out, we can now paste in the text that it copied. This is copied. And then we can copy it and then paste it. And as you can see, uh, it's that simple to add a snack bar as well as copy our text. So let's save out of this and close out of it. We don't need that anymore. And then we can come back to our custom text field and our custom text field is actually done. Like I said, still getting an error. This is supposed to change when we type, but it's because of how we're temporarily doing our text editing controller, uh, which we'll fix later then. Great. Now we can go back to our home screen. We're done with our custom text field. Uh, this is what it looks like. We can close out of that. We can go back to our home screen and we can add in our different text fields now. So we have our one. Uh, we want to add some spacing in between. Our height is going to be 40 like so. And then uh, we can go ahead and copy this one and we can just rename it to something different. Now we have all three. So we want our second one to have 5,000 uh, characters. We want it to have uh, five max lengths. And then we want to do enter uh, video description. Great. And then we want to make a different text editing controller for these. So we'll do description, uh, description controller. And then we'll do tags controller. And again, we're going to replace these, which is why they're calling errors. Um, but we'll use these for now just to show you how it works. And then we can do tags controller. And then video tags. And then this one, I guess we could do four and 500, I think is the route we go. Eh. Let's copy the spacing here. So we actually do 5,006 and then 504. And then we do uh, 103. Great. And then we're going to get an error. So we just need to drag this down a little bit. Uh, we'll fix this uh, window layout later. We'll do that last. Uh, but there we go. Now that we have our text editing controllers done, uh, we do want to finish this up with just our save file button at the bottom. That is quite easy to do. We actually already have it. So we're just going to do sized box of a height of 20. And then we can go ahead and add in a row just in case we want to add other stuff down here. I don't think we do, but we could. We're going to pass in our children and then we're just going to pass in our main button just like before. We're going to pass in null and then the button. Uh, and this is why we make methods because it was very easy to make that save button uh, just like that. Perfect. Uh, we don't want save button, we want save file, uh, but there we go. We now have a new file, a save file. Uh, these two buttons are inputs, which at the moment uh, they're not working properly, um, but they do work properly if we save it, then we can copy the text. So great. Now what we want to do here is we want to um, make this so it's a little bit, uh, we want this button to be disabled if these are empty. Um, so we could do that now. Actually, we're going to wait because we're going to actually create our file service first um, so that we can actually start getting all of these buttons to work and our uh, actual 
copy paste thing to work as well. So this is kind of where everything comes together and our design actually starts working. So we can do that by going over to our lib folder and we're going to make a services folder and then we're gonna make a new file called file underscore service dot dart. We're gonna import our material because we're gonna need this. And then this is where everything kind of gets, uh, I won't say complicated, but we're gonna be doing a lot in this file, which is why it's a service. And we're gonna get started by doing class, file, service, and then we're going to return, uh, make a bracket, great. So the first thing what we're gonna do is we're going to type in all of our controllers. So we're actually gonna use the controllers here rather than uh, in our home file, we're gonna put them in our file service because we're gonna need to reference them from our file service. We never really need to reference them in our main uh, home screen. Uh, we just need to call them. So we're going to uh, put them here, but that is going to give us uh, an error on our controllers. So what we wanna do in order to use our file service is we need to uh, like actually bring it in. And we can do this by calling file service, which is our new file that we created file uh, with a lowercase service, and then it's going to equal our file service. So essentially we're just saying, hey, when we reference file service here, it's actually our file service here. Great, and now we can come down here and just call these, and we'll do that by doing file service dot title controller, file service description controller, and file service tags controller. Great. And now we can go ahead and get that working. Now, before we go back to our file service, we wanna handle our text editing controllers so that way we're taking care of them. First, we wanna make sure that they're completely empty before we can hit the save, uh, not empty, before we can hit the save button. So we can start adding that uh, functionality here. So first, what we wanna do is we wanna do an init state, uh, which again is why we have the stateful widget. And then we're going to pass in uh, we can delete this out. We're going to call a new function. And this function is going to add some listeners to our text editing controller. So it's going to be void add listeners. There we go. And then in here, we're going to create a list. This list is going to be a list of text editing controller. And then it's going to be called controllers. And inside, we'll give it a list. So the list that we can do is we can just hard code this. We'll do file service dot our title controller, file service dot our description controller, and then file service dot our tags controller. Great. And now what we want to do here is we want to do a loop um, for a for loop for a text editing controller, which is called controller. Oops in our controllers. So we're saying for each controller in controllers, do something. And all we wanna do here is we wanna do controller dot add listener. And then the listener that we're gonna pass is a function that we need to make. So we can just uh, pass it blank for right now. Actually, we'll let it default to this right now. And then we're gonna pass in a new function. So we're gonna create this function. And this function is very simple as well. We're gonna just call it void and it's gonna be called underscore on field changed. And this says anytime the fields change, do something. And this is going to call a set state. And a set state is very important. This means that anytime information changes, it's going to reload this page, which reloads everything else or reloads the, the context, I guess, is an easier way to explain it. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do file service dot field empty, uh, which we don't actually have yet. So let's go ahead and create that. We can go back to our file service and we're going to make a boolean bool, which means it could be true or false. And we'll call this fields not empty. And we're gonna check this later as well, which is why we're calling it here uh, in our service. Okay, so we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do file service dot fields not empty. And then this is going to equal to our file service dot title controller dot text dot is not empty. And we wanna make sure that the other ones aren't empty. So we can actually copy this, Alt-Z. Uh, we can copy this and make sure that our description controller isn't empty. And we wanna make sure that our tags controller is not empty. And if they're not, so if all of them are not empty, this is going to pass in that they're not empty. 
if they are empty, then it, any of these are empty, then it's going to pass in that one of them are empty. So now what we can do is we can add the listener to our controllers, and that's done by just doing on field changed. Great. And now we can still work them like normal, but now they're actually throwing in another piece of information. They're checking to see if they're not empty. Great. And then because we're adding something to it, we also want to get rid of it when it's done. So we can come back up here and do dispose, just like we did earlier. We want to dispose of stuff that we're doing. Um, so we can go ahead and just remove the listeners. Um, actually, we got to make a function for that. So we'll make a function for that, just like we did the add listeners. We'll make a function for remove listeners. So we'll do remove listeners. And then here we'll make uh, essentially the exact same. So we can copy this. And then instead of add listener, we're going to just remove the listener. Great. And then we can call that on our dispose, um, remove listeners. Great. So when it's being used, it's going to call the add listeners, which we can now call add listeners. And then when it's not being used, it's going to remove the listeners. And we can refresh. And now our copy paste actually works. And the reason why this works is because every time we type in data, this is why I didn't work earlier, every time we type in data, we're setting the state. So it's reloading our page every single time we type something in. And then that's why it worked if I typed it in and saved it. It's like, oh, there's data in there. But if I deleted the data and then saved it, oh, there's no data in there. But this is what we were missing. We were missing this uh, set state, which we could have technically done earlier, but I wanted to do it like this because this is how we do it. Perfect. So now that we're kind of done with this screen, uh, for right now, we can go back to our file service and we can start working on our actual functionality of our app. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a file and then this is going to auto import from dart.io. This file could be null, so we want to add a question mark and then we're going to call it selected file. And this means the file that we selected. And then we're also going to pass in a string and this string is going to be a selected directory, which is equal by default to nothing. Uh, nothing is a string, nothing. That's how you do it that way. And then we want to make sure that we don't add final. So now what we can do is we can create a function that actually saves our content. So when we hit our save button, we want to be able to save our content. So to do this, we can do void save content. And we're actually going to call this outside of our um, function as well, which is why it's not underscore like my other methods were, um, because we are going to be calling this elsewhere. And then we also want to make sure that this is a sync, which means that it can do stuff inside of it. So we're going to pass in a few things that we're going to need. First, we're going to grab all of our controllers. So we can do final title equals title controller dot text. We're also going to do our description. Uh, description equals description controller dot text. And again, we're grabbing the text, not the actual controller itself. And then final tags equals tags controller dot text. Perfect. And then we want to create a new, um, we want to contain, uh, create the, con the, the text content that we're going to add to a text document. Um, and we can do this by doing final text content is equal to a blank array. Now, what we want to do here is we want to style this how we want. So there's many different ways that you can style a text document. Um, but the easiest way that I found is we're going to do the title, which is the title of our video. And then we're going to do a um, backslash n and backslash n. And this means new lines. Um, so it's going to add that in. And then we're going to pass in our title. So essentially, we're going title, return, return, right in the title. And then we're going to do it again, return, return or new line, I guess is what it's called. And then we're going to pass in our description. And this is very, um, because it's in a string, you don't want to add like spacings or anything um, because they're going to be in your design and it's going to cause problems. So uh, just do a description and then we're going to a new line, new line. And then we're going to pass in our description, which we can do by doing the dollar sign. And then we're going to do new line, new line. And then we're going to call it tags. And then the tags is going to be new line, new line, and then we're going to pass in our tags. So essentially what this is saying, and, and I'll show you here just for an example, uh, we're uh, pretend this is a text field, we're writing title, 
period, period, and then this is the title. And then we're returning twice, and then we're doing description, and then this is, oops, and then instead of writing it here, we're doing return, return, this is the description, right? And then this is how it's lined up in the text document, but then we'll be able to break out at the, the two returns. That way we can bring them into our forms, which is nice. This is an easy uh, indicator that, hey, let's separate based on these this, this situation. So now that we have the text content, what we can do is we can start writing in our, uh, we're gonna do a try catch. And a try catch is essentially saying, hey, try to do something, but if I fail, don't worry, I'm gonna catch that failure, and then I'll tell you why. And, and this is how you write a try catch. So try something, if it fails, tell me what went wrong with this E, and then we can pass this E. Now, just because we already know um, that we're going to fail, we can actually do that right now, and we're going to use our snack bar, which we've already made. So we can do snack bar utils, and then we want to show a snack bar. And then for the snack bar, we have the con uh, context. Again, this is grabbing a different context, um, but we're going to have the context from when we pass it into our save context. Make sure you're passing in context, very important. And then if we fail, well, we're going to need an icons.error to let us know that it failed. And then tell us what failed. Now, there's many different ways that this has failed. We could grab the event and then based on that add different ones. But I'm just gonna keep it very basic because if this fails, it means the file was not saved. Do I know why the file is not saved? Possibly, but at the moment, I just know it wasn't saved. That's all I, the user, care about. Was my file saved? Yes or no? And this will say that it did not save. And then what we can do here is we can go into our try and we can actually try to save our file. So first, what we need to do is we need an if statement. We're going to check to see if our selected file I wrote filed, I want file, there we go. Uh, we're gonna check to see if our selected file is not equal to null, and by default, it is null, right? There's no, this is why we have the question mark here, because it is null. Um, by default, this is null, and if this means that it's null, it means that there is no selected file. Uh, so what we wanna do then is we want to await, this is why we're using async, we're going to wait for a selected file, which could be null, so we're gonna pass in the exclamation point, and then we're going to write as string, and then we're going to write our text content. Perfect. So what this is saying is if it's null, if it's not null, which means we actually have a selected file, we're, we're good to go. We already have the file, everything is good to go, we just need to save the content. So it's going to await that, it's going to make sure that we have our selected file, it's gonna check again to make sure that it's not null, because it could be null, and then if it's not null here as well, then it's going to write as a string our text content, which this is a string. Title, new line, new line, title, new line, new line, description, and yeah, we're, we're good. We've already written our file if it exists. However, it might not exist because by default, it does not exist. So let's go ahead and make sure that it does exist. So we can do that if it doesn't exist. Well, now we need to do something else. And what we need to do is, well, first, we want to figure out how we're going to structure our actual file path. Now, I already know how we need to do it, so you could take the moment to figure out how you wanna do this, but we're gonna do that. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I include today's date, because when I save this, I need to make sure that I can store this later. Maybe I'm writing this file in advance. I wanna be able to quickly do it by date, that way I can filter from top to bottom. I'm gonna be putting everything in a folder that's gonna have hundreds of text documents, so by doing it by date is gonna be very easy. So to do this, we need to get the date for today and we can do that by doing final today date and we need to create a, a function that actually gets our date so we can do get today date and now we need to create this function so we can come down below and then we're going to do a static which means it can't be accessed elsewhere string and then get today date and then this is actually just going to return in a function that allows us to get the date. So we'll do final, oops, we'll do final uh, now equals date time. And this is going to auto import. And then we want now, we want the, we want right now, right this moment, right this moment when it's called. And then what we need to do here is we need to install a formatter so that we can actually format our date how we want to. So to do this, we can do final formatter uh equals 
date format and date format doesn't exist and date format doesn't exist because we need to actually import a package so we'll do flutter pub add international great now we have the ability to format our dates so we can do final formatter equals date format now it's auto importing that and then we want to give it the format that we want so for this to work in a folder structure it's best to do the year dash two m's uh, capital which is zero format so zero one zero two zero three and then the day which is lowercase dds great this will give us uh so it's going to take our uh this is going to be our formatter it's going to date format great now what we can do is we can do a formatted date so we can do final formatted date equals formatter dot format that's a function or a method and then we're going to format the now so essentially what this is saying and then let's go ahead and return it so we can stop getting errors so simply put we're we're going to return our formatted date or well, formatted date is going to use a formatter that we created which in this case is going to take whatever we give it and we're going to format it in this uh this this way like we're going to say hey whatever date i give you we're going to format it so then we format the now so this gives us today's date in a long string a different date time etc and then we're going to format it where we just want the the year the month and the day in this format and then we're going to return that and now uh, we actually have our uh, today's date right here, which is going to return the formatted date. So then today's date is going to equal this formatted date, which we're going to call with a, a method of get today date. Great. Hope that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments. Um, it gets it gets a little tricky when you're trying to do different things, but uh, it's definitely fun. And and uh, once you get used to it, it's very straightforward. So next we're going to do is we're going to return a string and the string is going to be called a meta data direct path. This is going to be the path that we want and we want it to be equal to our selected directory. Now at the moment, our selector directory is nothing, um, and at the moment, metadata uh, direct path is nothing. So what we want to do is we want to check to see if it is equal to nothing because we can't save a file if it's nothing if it's not created, you know, not equal to anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to check is it empty, and if it is empty, then we're going to make it not empty. So what we need to do here is we're going to do final directory equals and now we need to install another package and this package is going to be a file picker so we can control tilde do flutter pub add file underscore picker and this is what makes uh, flutter very easy because there's a lot of packages out there that you can use uh, to do what you're trying to do so now we can do uh, file uh, final directory equals and it's going to be async, so we need to await it. And it's going to be file picker auto import dot platform, which is going to get my platform. And then we're going to call its method get directory path. And what this is saying is if it's empty, we want to prompt the user to pick a file and grab the directory path is essentially what that's and you'll see that later but that's essentially what that's doing and now that we have a directory because we just selected a directory we want to do selected directory is equal to our meta director path, uh, metadata direct path which is also equal to our directory exclamation point and this confused me i didn't know what this meant um, but what this is saying is it's grabbing our directory and it's going to equal to both of these that's all it is so think of it backwards and because this could be null aka our um, file picker does not choose a directory we need to make sure that we add the exclamation point because this could be null now we are getting an error right here and it's because a value of type string can't be assigned to a uh, variable of type file um, Oh, and we're getting an error because we actually don't want to set this to our uh, selected file. We want to set this to our selected directory. That's my fault. And then we are getting an error because when I hit save, it set it as a final. Again, it, sometimes it causes problems because I have it auto saved to add final and const whenever it should. Uh, but yeah, so make sure it's underscore selected directory equals metadata direct path, which is equal to the directory. And we're going to make sure that it's not null. If it's not null, uh, then pass that. Perfect because it needs to be a string. Strings can't be null. Great. 
So now that we have that, we're good in that section. But sometimes, um, again, it, this is if it is empty, we're going to essentially just create a directory. But if it's not empty, which means we already have the directory, what we can do is we can do final file path, and then we're going to pass in our information to do our path. So we can do this by doing uh, a string. And then we're going to pass in our path. So our path is going to be our metadata direct path. We're going to have a slash because that's how it is with the, if you look at a, you know, how your computer's paths work. And then we're going to pass in today's date, today date. We're going to do a, a dash, space dash. We're going to pass in the title. And then we're going to pass in whatever we want. And then this for this, because of how I have it set up for my personal preference, we're going to do metadata.txt. And essentially, just to show you what this looks like, it's going to be uh, like my path, you know, uh, spellthorn, right? And then let's say it's on my desktop. Assume that's the correct path. Well, what it's going to do is it's going to do today's date in that format. So it's 2023. Uh, dash because we have the dashes here, uh, 04 because it's April, and then today's date is the 30th, so it's 30, and then it's going to do this is the title, and then it's going to return uh, metadata.txt. And make sure that you have the .txt because this is going to tell uh, your computer that this is a txt file or a text file. Um, if you don't have that, it'll just it could still work, but make sure you have the .txt, very important, and then whatever else you want is your path. Great. Now we can do final new file, and then this file is actually just going to be a file, and it's going to be a file of our file path. Great. And then we can bring it all together by doing await new file. We're going to write as a string, just like we did before, because now this is actually saying, hey, we have it. And there we go. We can now write a file. So let's just break this down because I know it is a little confusing. So essentially, we're going to try to see if we can uh, save our file. If we don't save our file, we're going to throw an error, and it's just going to be a um, snack bar that says file not saved. However, if it is successful and doesn't throw an error, then we're first going to check to see if we already have a selected file. If our selected file is not equal to null, this means we already have a file, then we're going to just take the file we already have and write our text content, which is right here, uh, into this file as a string. If, however, we don't have a selected file, we never created one yet because by default we don't, then we're going to start creating one. So we're going to get today's date so that we can add it to our directory. Again, we use it right here. We're also going to set up our directory path and we're going to grab in the selected directory that we already have. By default, we don't have one. This is the first time we've used this app. We don't have a selected directory. So at that point, if that is true, if it's empty, then we're going to uh, prompt our user with a file file picker and let it choose a folder that you want. And then what we're going to do is once you have chosen that folder, which is going to be right here as our directory, we're going to save it into our metadata, uh, metadata direct path as well as our selected directory. So now our selected directory knows that we have one and our metadata direct path knows that we have one. So this is now no longer true and we can continue. So then we're going to create a file path with our direct path the today's date, the title, which is the content in our text editor, uh, in, in our input for our title. And then we're going to add in whatever we want to create a text document. And then essentially we just have a new file, which is going to be the file uh, function of our uh, file that we imported. And it's going to just sit you know, grab that file, essentially create that as an actual file. And then it's going to take that new file that we just created and it's going to write that content, text content as string. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments. And then uh, what we're going to do is because this is successful, we've now created a file, saved the file, and it is successful. We just want to let our user know that it was in fact saved. So we can do that by passing in snack bar utils, show a snack bar. We're going to pass in the context that we have. This time it's going to be a successful. So we'll do icons.check underscore circle because that's the one I like. And then the message, we're going to say file saved successfully. Great. And now this actually allows us to save content, uh, which we can actually use by going back to our home screen. And we can come back down to our saved file. And instead of passing in a blank function, now we can actually pass in the function that allows us to save it. First, we want to make sure that our file service, uh, file service 
dot um, fields are not empty. We want to make sure that they're not empty. I don't want you to be able to save unless it everything is filled out. Title, description, and tags. I'm not going to let you save until you gave me the title, description, and tags. And if that's true, then we can return a function that says it's true. Well, this function is going to be an arrow function that calls our file service dot save content what we just created, and we're going to pass in the context. Again, this is where we're passing in the context that we're going to use later to make sure that we have context as well as for our snack bar. And then if that doesn't work, uh, aka they are not empty, then we're going to just pass in null. And the null should disable our button. Perfect. So now when we have content, our save button comes actually here. And I, I saved it save button again. Let's rename that to save file. Our save file button actually works. But if any of these are empty, we are not able to actually save our file until all of them. And then if we hit save file, this is actually going to pop up a window for us to be able to save our file. And we'll select our folder, file successfully saved. And if we go to it, right here it is. It's the year, the month, the day, uh, S, which is our title, and the meta, uh, metadata. And then I have .txt, so it's a text document. And if we open it up, here we go. We have it exactly how we formatted it. Title, uh, two, you know, two new lines, S two new lines, description, two new lines, S, two new lines, tags, well, you get the idea. And that's awesome. But we're not done yet because now that we have the ability to save our files, we also want to be able to make a new file. We want to change our folder if we already have the folder selected. And then, of course, we want to load our file. So let's start doing that as well. Great. So we can go back to our file service. Now that we've successfully saved data, what we want to be able to do is we want to create uh, other. We want to be able to load data. So we can do that by coming out of our first uh save content make sure you come out of that completely and then we're going to do void load file and then this is going to pass in our context because we're beginning using a snack bar and we want to make sure that this is async as well there we go and now we can start doing this and this is very similar to the other one we're going to start off with a try catch because we want to handle our errors if we have to so we'll do try and then we'll do catch and the catch is going to pass in a variable uh, we don't actually use this variable but Again, you can if you want to. It'll tell you what went wrong, and you can make different snack bars for that. But we're going to just keep it very basic. If it fails, it fails. I, I, I don't know why it failed. It just it failed. And uh, I'm just going to tell you that uh, something went wrrong. So we can do another snack bar, utils.show snack bar, pass in our context. We're going to do icons because this is, again, a failure. Uh, so error rounded, just like before. And then this one is going to be. Uh, no file selected. So you did something wrong. You didn't select a file. That's completely fine. You're not going to break my app, but I'm going to let you know that you did not select a file before you continue. And now what we want to do is we want to actually check uh, and actually be able to get a file. So we can do this by doing file picker. Uh, which we installed earlier, dot result. This is saying, hey, this is the result from the file picker. And we're going to add a question mark because it could be null because they could not select it. And then we'll do result. And then this is going to await uh, file picker dot platform, just like before. But then this one, we're going to do pick files. Uh, and this essentially just says, um, hey, let you pick a file uh, because we're going to load, a, you know, we're going to click this button. It's going to say, hey, pick a file, and then whatever you pick is going to be the result. That's essentially what's happening. However, we could fail that, right? So first, what we want to do is we want to check to make sure that result is not equal to null. If it's not equal to null, uh, then we, you know, if it is null, we want to do something else. If it isn't null, then we want to use it because we have it. So if it's not equal to null, we can grab it. So we can do file equals file and then this is really long. It's result.files.single.path. And essentially, this is just saying grab the first uh, result and, and give me the path for it. And this could actually be equal to null. You can see this right here, string question mark. So if that's ever the issue, make sure you add an exclamation point at the end of whatever you're calling. So it says, hey, this could be null. And then what we want to do is now that we have our file, we just want to save it to our selected file. Our selected file is going to equal to our file. Now we need to get the uh, content. So we can do final uh, file content 
equals await file, the file that we just made, and then we want to read it this time. Before we wrote it, we you know we wrote the data. Now we want to read the data as a string. Perfect. Now we're going to get all of our data as a string. However, we want to split the string up into different information so that we can put it into our input fields. So to do this, once we have it, uh, we can do uh, final lines because it's going to give us everything. Um, and we want to split this up so we can we already know what we're going to split it. We're going to split our file content dot split and we're going to split it with the pattern that we used. And the pattern that we used are the exclamation uh, backslash n backslash n. There's a reason why we did that. One, it makes it look really nice in the text document if you're reading the text document. But two, it's something that we always do after each section. So we can go ahead and just grab that information because we separated it. Now we've used this a lot. If you look, we have it at the titles, then we have n. So this is our zero. This would be our one. This is our uh, two. Actually, I'm sorry. This is zero. Um, this is one, yeah, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is five. So what we want to do is we want to grab just those lines because we don't need the other information. That's just for our text document uh, in case we're reading it that way. What we want to do is we want to grab the individual lines of the actual data. So we can do this by doing con uh, title controller dot text. Now we're actually submitting data from code into our input. And then we can make this equal to lines. And we want the first one. The first zero, it goes from zero up. So it counts from zero. So the first one was actual our title. I'll show you again. This is zero. So, but we don't want this. We want this one. We want the actual data. And that's why we're doing that one. So we're going to grab one, three, and five, essentially. And then we can do description controller dot text equals lines three. And then we can do our tags, tags controller dot text. Again, make sure it's the texture changing lines and then the fifth one. So we want the first line, uh, the first line, which is technically second line, third line, and then the fifth line. And now that we have this information, we can say, hey, the file was successfully uploaded. And we know how to do this because we made a snack bar. Uh, so snack bar utils dot show snack bar pass in the context. This is going to be successful. So we can do upload file. There we go. And then we can do file uploaded. Now we already know technically the file was uploaded because it changed the data. But let's say the data was almost identical. You wouldn't have known if it actually changed it or not. However, this could fail because again, our result could be null. And if our result is null, then we want to do an else statement. And then this is just going to be a snack bar utils dot show snack bar. And then this is going to be an error because we didn't choose anything. So error underscore rounded. And then this message, if it's null, it means, hey, you did not select a file, which again is completely fine. It's not going to break the app, but I want you to know that you did not select a file. So if the try catch fails, we did not select a file. If the um, we did choose a file, but it was null, which means you didn't choose a file, you had the opportunity to, everything went right for you to choose a file, and you chose not to, then we're also going to get this result as well. No file selected. Great. Now we can go back to our home screen and we can actually call the load file. So we can come up here in our action button. Instead of returning null, what we want to do is we just want to call file service dot and then we just want to call that new file dot load file. There we go. And then we're going to get an error on this. Uh, checking to see. Oh, we need it as an actual function. There we go. Arrow function. Can't just call it arrow function and then save, and then we can add this just so it's a little easier to read. Perfect. So now when we click this, we're going to click the button. It's going to pop up our desktop, and we could change the folder, of course, find out where our file is. But if we grab the file, let's go ahead and delete this stuff out, right? Uh, this is the file I have. So if I click here, I'm going to choose the file that I saved earlier, because again, you want to choose a file that's matching your folder structure or file structure. If it doesn't, it's just going to mess up. Um, but we're going to choose the file that we've already saved earlier. And there we go. File uploaded and it put in that data. But now that we have that file, we already have the file. We can, this is a new title. We can resave that file. And if we go here um, and actually open up this file, just to prove that it's changed, this is a new title. And that's what I love so much about reading and writing data. So now that we've saved the file, 
we can delete this out, right? We can load that file back and it just grabs that information right back, which is great. Now what we can do is we can work on the new file button, I think. Uh, we'll do the new file just because it's simpler. So we can do void uh, new file and then we'll pass in our context because again, we're gonna make a new uh, uh, show a snack bar. Anytime we're showing a snack bar, we're passing in the context. And then this is essentially just gonna clear everything out. So what we can do is we can do underscore selected file. This file is going to be equal to null uh, because again, we check earlier if it's null and if it's not equal to null, then we do stuff. If it is null, then we create it again. And we want to be able to do this. So we're going to do selected file is equal to null. But then we also want to clear out all of our controllers. So we can do title controller dot clear. We can do description controller dot clear. And then we can do tags controller dot clear. Perfect. And then because we've cleared everything and it was successful, we do want to show a snack bar. So show snack bar context icons dot we can just do file upload again we can choose this a different font if we need to but that's fine it still shows a file icon and then we'll do new file created perfect and then we save and now we can go back to our home screen and just like we called the load file we can come back to our main function and then instead of passing in null this time we can do file service dot new file and there we go. Now when we click this, it deletes everything out and tells us that a new file has been created. Now it doesn't actually create the file until we actually save it. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But now it does save the successful file. And it didn't prompt us to a different folder. However, if you look here, we do have a different file. And that is really awesome. So it just kind of keeps the last folder that you had. I feel I'm always going to use the exact same folder with this uh, tool um, or app. But you could make it where you want to change the folder. So that's why I have a change folder button. But yeah, if we don't change the folder, it's just going to use the last location that we had, which is really nice. And then let's go ahead and we can clear it out again, make a new file, and we're good to go. So now that we have all of that done, we can create a new file, we can save the file, we can load a file, we just want to be able to change our folder. So we can do that by going back to our file service and then make a method for changing the folder. To do this, it's very straightforward as well. We're just going to do a new uh, void new directory. This is going to pass in our context because we may do a uh, snack bar. And then we're going to do async because we're going to need uh, stuff that is asynchronous. Perfect. Now for this, we're going to do the try catch again. So we're going to try something first. And then if it fails, we're going to be there and we're going to catch it and let you know that it failed. So we can do try catch, uh, pass in the E. And then anytime we use the try catch, we're going to let them know, aka our user, send feedback so we can do the snack bar. Uh, utils dot show snack bar pass in the context that we're passing icons dot air rounded I'm using the same one you already know that and then this time no folder selected so if something fails it's because no folder was selected something else went wrong but the main issue was no folder was selected which is all we care about as the user I don't care what went wrong was my folder selected yes or no and it was not now, if it is successful, what we can do here is we can do a string. This could be null, so we want to pass in the question mark, and we'll call this directory. And then what we can do here is we can await our file picker again, just like we did before. If there wasn't a file, we had to do this, but now a uh, folder, but now we do have a directory, so we want to change it though. So we're going to do the exact same thing again platform got, uh, dot get directory path. And then here, we're going to essentially just do what we did earlier. Selected directory is equal to our directory. And then our selected directory, uh, selected file, um, excuse me, selected file is going to be equal to null. And this is why we're going to create a new folder, but we're not going to have a file here. And we are getting an error on the directory because the directory, again, could be null. So because it could be null, we want to add an exclamation at the point so that it handles that, that it, hey, this isn't going to work properly. This is null. Perfect. And then because this is successful this time, we just want to pass in our snack bar. Show snack bar. This one is going to be icons.folder. And then the message is going to be new folder selected. Perfect. And there we go. Now we can go back to our home screen and we can come down to our folder button. And then just like before, file service dot 
new directory. Perfect. And now when we click this folder, we can choose a different folder. Let's go to our downloads, hit select folder. New folder has been selected. Now if we save this, this is a new file. Uh, description is, I don't know, tags are tags. We can save this file. And then if we go to the new folder, just to show it to you, um, we can actually go to our desktop. Actually, that's not good. Let's go to load file. We can go to our downloads. And right here, we have our new file that we just created in our downloads other than the one that was in our desktop. Perfect. And there we go. We did not select a file. This was a fail error. We did not select a folder. This was a fail error. We um, hit new file. We can do it this way. Save file. It actually saves successfully because it's our first time. But if we refresh it, because we haven't saved anything yet, new file, save it. Where do you want to save it? I'll hit cancel, file not saved. And there are, are all of our save files and our error handling and all of that stuff. And I know it's a little tricky to get the hang of that. I'll probably do another video where we save, do reading and writing data, but that's essentially how we do it. It's very straightforward. So I think we are almost done with the actual functionality. Let's just make sure everything is cleaned up and good to go formatted properly, we're, we're adding our listener, we're disposing them, we're adding our listener, we're removing them, our on fields are changed. Uh, everything has a function on our buttons, file service, new file, load file, directory, uh, save content, everything looks good to go. All right, so we're pretty much good to go. Now what we can do is we can start styling our app a little bit better. We wanna add a splash screen to our app that loads at the beginning, just to add it a nice little bit of flair so that it's not just loading right to this when we refresh it. Um, so we can do that by going over to screens, new file. This is going to be called splash underscore screen dot dart. Uh, we're gonna import our material like we normally do. Here we're going to create a stateful widget. Very important that it's a stateful widget and we'll call this splash screen. There we go. And then uh, to actually test this out, we can go back to our main.dart file. Instead of our home screen, we can bring in our splash screen. And there we go, it's now a placeholder and now we can start styling our splash screen. So for our splash screen, we're obviously going to return a scaffold. Our scaffold is going to have a background color. We already have this, which is our dart, app theme.dart. There we go. Uh, we're then going to do a sized box, uh, just to make this a little bit easier. We'll do body sized box. Our sized box is going to have a, uh, well, actually I'll show you in a moment while we do this. Uh, we're gonna add a child. Our child is going to be a column. Uh, we're gonna get an error on the const, there we go. Our column is gonna take some children. The first child we're going to take is going to be um, our icon. Our icon is going to be icons.edit, which is a little pencil. We're gonna pass in a color, which is going to be our app theme accent. And then uh, we're gonna pass in a size, and the size is going to be 200. There we go, there's a little pencil. And then we're also going to do text. Our text is going to be meta tube, and then we're going to add a style to this, and we don't have a style to our text yet, so we can go clean these up. We can go to our app styles, and then right below our counter style, we'll add our last one, const text style, and we'll call this splash style equals text style, and then we're gonna pass in some styles. So this one is going to take in a color, which is going to be our accent color. It's going to take in a font size of 60, a font style this time, or we're gonna make it a font style dot italic, and then our font weight, weight is going to be font weight W500, which is like a medium. Then we can save that, and then we can come back here and then do app theme dot splash style. Great, and there we go. Now we want this to be in the centered, uh, so we can do this by going to our column, do main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot center, 
and then this centers it uh, vertically. However, we want to also center it uh, horizontally, which columns do by default. However, we need to give our sized box, and this is why we made a sized box, we need to give our sized box a width, and this width is going to be double dot infinity, which means infinite, essentially. It's going to be as big as possible. Uh, as, as, as big as it can be forever. And then this way it's always in the centered, even if we scale it. Perfect. And there we go. Now what we need to do, because this is a splash screen, we need it to move after a while. So what we can do is we can come under our uh, state. We can do an init state here, which is going to run as soon as the app starts. And then uh, we're not going to write too much here, so we can just uh, write it in our init state. We're going to call a future dot delayed and then this is going to have a duration and then that duration is going to be seconds and we just want one second uh, in my other video I made a video about uh, doing splash screens and I did two seconds but it just it was it was way too long so uh, we're only going to do one second here and then what we need to do is delete that uh, what we need to do here then is we're going to pass in our function and then this is what happens after one second. Well, it's very simple. We just want to navigate to our other screen. So we can do navigator dot of context dot push replacement. And normally you push stuff, but we want to push the replacement, which means we don't want this here anymore uh, after we push it. And then we're going to return a material page route. And this material page route is going to take a builder. We don't actually need to use the builder. So we can do um, underscore and then an arrow function. And then we just want to pass in our home screen. And what this will do, what this will do is after after one second, it'll switch from our MetaTube to our app. There we go. One second's long enough for me to read it and then gone. Read it and gone. Perfect. Now we are done with our splash screen. We're pretty much done with our app. What we want to do is go to our main.dart file and we want to start messing with our window information because this is a window and we want it to handle it specifically. So we can start doing that in our main.dart file. With our main.dart file, anytime we're taking control of stuff, we want to call widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialize. This just makes sure that widget uh, the widgets are being built, I think. I don't actually know exactly what it is, so let me know in the comments below, but um, this is kind of, you know, sometimes you just write code that makes sense, but you don't know exactly what it does, but maybe that's a no-no, but <laughs> that's what we're doing here. And then we want to do, uh, we want to call in a new package, and that package is going to be called window manager. So control tilde, flutter, pub, add window underscore manager, and then this will allow us to add like specific sizing and, and all of that stuff. Great. So we can do that now. We can do await uh, window uh, with a lowercase manager dot ensure initialized. And we're going to get an error because we're using await. So we need to add that to our void main. And then we can call it that way. And then we're going to get an issue on the window manager. So import the library. Perfect. Now we want to give it some window options. So we'll do window options, uh, window options lowercase equals window options higher case capital uh, and then we can give it a minimum size our minimum size is going to take a size and this size is going to be 400 by 780 uh, 780 is the height that I wanted to have 480 is the uh, minimum width that I wanted to have now we can still s make it a little smaller uh, but I don't want it to start like that uh, I personally like my size to be size and then 600 by uh, 780. But let's say there's a reason why I want to make it smaller. I would like to have the ability to do so. So we're going to give it a minimum size, which is 400 by 780, but then a size of 600 by 780. We also want this to start center. Uh, maybe in a future video, I'll show you how you can make it where it saves the location uh, on your uh, on your screen. But uh, right now, I didn't. This video is way too long enough, uh, so we'll hold off on that. And then we want to give it a title. Uh, this title um, we can actually just call MetaTube. At the moment, you can see it's lowercase MetaTube. But if we save this, and then when we actually use it, it'll switch it to capital MetaTube. And then once we have our window options, we just want to use them. So we can do window. Uh, manager dot wait until ready to show pass in our window options and then pass in an async uh, function there we go 
And then we want to just wait uh, for it to be uh, window manager dot show. And then once it shows, we want to focus it. So we can do wait window manager dot focus. Great. So it's going to show it and then it's going to focus it so that we can actually use it. And then uh, what we can do here is, yeah, just refresh. Oh, we're getting an error. Don't refresh. All right, we got the good old close and reopen. And uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, that is completely fine there. And then uh, we are getting some issues on this. So maybe my 780 is not the right size. Uh, I think I know why we're running into that problem. Um, but there we go, just refresh it and it will go ahead and do it. And now you can see it's actually MetaTube with a capital M. And we actually want a capital T as well. Uh, so we can refresh. And then when we do refresh, uh, it does actually throw it into the center. And it also shows our splash screen uh, for a second and then goes. We are getting an issue on the height because I think I messed up some of the uh, style on the home screen. Uh, so to fix this, we can just go into our home underscore screen dot dart file and we can get rid of this height right below our main button. For some reason, it pushes it too high. Um, not sure why uh, I redid this design and it doesn't do that on my other one. So for some reason, that's different, um, but that's fine. And then uh, the uh, pop ups still cover the save button, which is fine because I don't want you to be able to save while these are popping up anyhow. So that's completely fine. But that's why that was working. So we can go back to our main.dart file. And then of course, our meta tube is now meta tube with a capital, uh, we still need to change the icon. Um, so we can actually do that right now. Um, actually, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, we can do that right now because we're pretty much done. Everything works now. Our app is completely finished. Uh, all we really want to do is um, is be able to uh, change the icon for when we use it and then of course install it as an exe uh, but everything works uh, properly and we can save it we can uh, handle our errors we can load new files which i'm not doing new file all of that stuff so uh, what we want to do here is this gets a little tricky but first we need an icon uh, so we can do that by loading up figma so here we have Figma loaded up. Uh, we just need to make an icon for our app and we can do that by going up to our plugins and search for material, um, oops, go to plugins, search for material design icons and hit run. Uh, for this, I'm just going to use a pencil which is right here, and then we can close that out. Now we wanna give this pencil our color so we can come down to the selection colors and uh, that color was FFA500. Perfect. And then we want to make this kind of big uh, so we can click this little button right here to constrain the proportions. Make sure you're on the outer and not the vector inside, but the actual uh, pencil. And then we can make this 512. This will just make a 512 image, uh, which is great. And then we can get rid of any backgrounds. And then there we go. And then we hit Control R to resave this. And we can call it app underscore icon. And then we want to save this as an actual um, icon and not like a PNG or anything. So we can go back up to our plugins. And then this one is going to be called ICNS uh, slash ICO generator. And we can run this with our actual thing selected. And then we can create an ICO. And when we click this, it's actually going to download our ICO. So here we have our app icon. What we want to do is we want to come over to our um, folder in our VS Code. We can right click any of them and reveal in file explorer. And then we want to go into our uh, meta two folder itself. We want to go to windows runner resources. And in here you'll see another icon that says app underscore icon. Uh, we actually want to just delete this out and we want to drag ours in and make sure that ours is app underscore icon. There we go. App underscore icon to replace the other app underscore icon. Now this doesn't really do much, um, but what we can do is we can go back into our Windows uh, folder, go to runner, go to resources, and you'll actually see our icon right here, which is great. Uh, we don't actually need to mess with that now, but what we do want to do is we want to go into our, we want to go into the runner dot RC and we want to scroll down and this is actually where it grabs the icon you can see right here icon icon But we want to come in here and we want to change this information so we can switch our company name to whatever you want it to be I'm just going to put spellthorn here um, for our file description. Uh, we want to put um, Making YouTube meta 
data easier, I guess. Um, for our internal name, MetaTube is fine. Uh, for the copyright, we're just going to put Spellthorn. Um, you can even do .com if you want. And then original file name is fine. Product name, I guess we can keep it lowercase, but we'll just put it capital because I want it to look nice. And then, yeah, so we can then save this file. This is what we're going to use to do our build. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, now we can open up our terminal and do flutter build windows. And then this is going to build our app, but it's going to make sure that you use that icon. Otherwise, you're still going to get the Flutter icon. You'll still have the right name, but you'll get the Flutter icon. So make sure that you change that information. We're going to wait for this to build. It shouldn't take that too, lo uh, too long, but it does take a little bit. All right, so it's built. So now what we can do is we can uh, minimize this. We can go into our folder. We can go into build, go to windows, go to runner, go to release, and here's our app. And our app has the icon, and uh, we can actually open this up. And this is a weird, real working app. Like this, we can close out of the default one. This is our app. We have the icon up here. We have MetaTube, and it works exactly as we want it to. We can now save a file. Uh, let's do it on our desktop, and we're going to save that. File is going to pop up. We can see the file here if we wanted to read it this way, but why read it that way when we can read it our way? We'll grab one that we did earlier. There we go. It works perfect. And it's also centered in the size and it works fine. A um, little weird about the size, but we can also make it bigger. Um, you just can't make it any, oops, you just can't make it any smaller than our minimum size. So this is the smallest it's going to get, um, but you can make it bigger if need be. Cool. So now what we're going to do, now that we have an EXE, we actually want to turn it into an actual installable application that you could share with yourself or friends uh, and they can install it. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, we're going to use a uh, software called Inno and I will put a link to it in the description. And what you want to do is you just want to go to the website and click the download Inno setup. And then for us, we have the EXE and we can just uh, download the US version. And then that will open up just like a software and you can install it yourself. Once it's installed, we want to actually open it up so we can do Inno setup compiler. And then here we're going to actually tell it to use our files and create an actual setup wizard for it. So we can do that by clicking create a new setup file using the script wizard. Hit OK. We're then going to hit next. We're then going to give our application a name, which in this case is MetaTube. We're going to give it a version, which is 1.0. We're going to put my uh, publisher here because I'm the publisher, but put your own name there. We're also going to put my website, which you can check out if you want to really just redirects you to my YouTube channel for right now, but maybe in the future it'll be better. And then uh, we can hit next. Now the programs file is where we want it to install. You can change this if you want, but just put it in program files because that's where it needs to go. And then the folder is going to be our MetaTube. We can hit next. Here what we want to do is we want to browse to our uh, ex executable, which we can hit browse. It's actually going to be on our desktop, MetaTube. Then it's going to be in our build file, our Windows file, our runner, release and then select the meta tube that we created right here and then we want to add the files associated with our file so we can do that by hitting add files control and select these and then we can go ahead and add in a folder that we need as well there was a data folder in there we need to grab that so we can hit add folder and then we can go to our desktop meta tube uh, go to build windows runner release, I wish this was easier, and then make sure you select the entire data folder. And then when you do that, just hit yes. And then we can double click the data folder, which is going to be the last one. And then right here in the destination subfolder, just write data. And then we can hit next. And then we can untick this. We don't need a special uh, executable. We can then keep these selected and hit next. We can do any license file. I don't have a license. I'll have to look into how to do that, but you can add that information here. Uh, we can do administrator install mode. There we go. We can do English. Uh, and then here we need the custom compiler output folder. This is going to hit browse. We'll go back to our desktop, MetaTube. And then we're in our MetaTube, we're going to make a new folder just to keep it all together. And we can call this installers. And then we're just going to select that one. 
Uh, the compiler output base file name we're going to put as ours, and this is going to be MetaTube. Make it sure, uh, make it the capitalization that you want. And then we're going to create a custom setup icon file. Now we already have this icon file, so we can hit browse, go to our desktop, MetaTube. Uh, this one is going to be in our Windows, our runner, our resources, and it's going to be the app icon that we used for our app icon as well. So we can drag that in, and then we can just hit next and then next, and then finish. And then this is gonna say, would you like to compile the new script now? Yes, we do. And then we can actually hit yes, so we can save it later. Um, this is the script that we're gonna use. We can go back to our MetaTube, uh, go to our installers, and then just save it there. And then we'll just call it MetaTube ISS. You can call it whatever you want, and hit save and wait for this to build. It doesn't take that long because our app's not that big. And now we can close out of this. And then what we can do is we can go to our MetaTube, go to our installers, and right here is our EXE. This is a real EXE that will install our app. So we can double click it. And also if we right click it real quick and go to properties and we go to details, this is the information that we were typing in. File description, MetaTube setup. And that actually gets overwritten, I guess. Um, so that's kind of sad, um, but we could change that later. And then product name is MetaTube, product version is one. So I think the inno actually overwrites this. So uh, that's kind of sad, but that's okay. We can double click it for a MetaTube. And then this is going to ask us to install it because it's an actual installation process, which is awesome. And then we can hit next. And then I already have a folder, but you won't. And you hit yes. And then we can uh, do a desktop shortcut if you want and then install it. And there we go. There's our desktop application. It's going to launch, which is great. It works. But now we can actually go to our command prompt and actually use it as an actual app which is awesome. Now, granted, if you share this with people, they might get, hey, this isn't your app. What are you doing? This is unsafe. So that's kind of why you need the license. But that's it. We took a while. <laughs> I don't know how long this video is yet, but it took a while. But we have a fully working app, which is awesome. Uh, the only issue is we might want to make this a little bit taller so that uh, the buttons don't over cover the save file. I think this is how I designed it initially, so it doesn't completely cover it. Um, but for some reason, it doesn't work exactly I did. So we could just mess around with those sizing. But that's it. The file is, I mean, it works. It, it's an actual real application. We can uh, install it. And yeah, I'd love to see what you guys would create. Let me know in the comments what you're going to make. Of course, this kind of teaches you the basics of how to handle some things. And you can definitely create this yourself. I think it's very great to have this if you're making YouTube videos. You can just copy paste into your YouTube video. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I worked really hard on this uh, because it is something that I wanted. And that's what's so great about Flutter. You can make stuff that makes your life easier. But I also wanted to share it with you guys so that you can make something that might make your life easier um, that is going to use these uh, you know these functions and these uh, fundamentals so I hope you guys enjoyed this video definitely let me know if you have any issues in the comments below I'll try to help you out and I'll see you in the next one